Let us begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for gathering all of us here together. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity for us to get to meet each other, even in, uh, and even if it's not face to face. We thank you for the technology that you have given us. We ask you for your guidance so that whatever it is that we're going to be learning from this session, we will be able to implement in our classrooms uh, in the coming days. Please also help us as we navigate through this uh, uh, pandemic. Give us the strength to be able to overcome all the challenges and trials of these days. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good afternoon again, everybody. Good afternoon. Can you? Can you unmute yourselves and say good afternoon? I just want to say good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's so difficult to give up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. sa inyong lahat. Finally, narinig ko ang boses niya. Because I was wondering if I was actually like talking to what? This is one of the difficult uh, difficulties of uh, giving sessions online. I don't get to see everybody, unlike if it, is in a, if it were in an auditorium, I could see everybody. Uh, but, 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 but now I don't know if I am actually getting through each one of you, but, but thank you for, for uh, responding and for saying good afternoon. So at least I know I'm not alone. There are 136 participants now in the, in the Zoom link. Good afternoon again, everybody. It is a rainy afternoon here in uh, at least in Montinlupa where I'm giving the talk from at least here where I uh, I am giving I am giving the talk from my office in a school called Paref Southridge School and that school is in Montinlupa City as I mentioned earlier my name is Luden Salamat again Luden Salamat so uh, I'm very sure no probably you yeah salamat <laughs> salamat why <laughs> Okay, my name is Luden Salamat. I'm very sure you're wondering na paano nakuha ni Mr. Salamat yung pangalan Luden. Actually, it's a combo name, no, of uh, my pa paternal grandfather and my maternal grandfather, Luis and Prudencio. So you I got the Lu from Luis and the Den from Prudencio and my mom and dad put them together, Luden. So I thought it didn't mean anything. Okay, until until 35 years ago, when I first came to Southridge and the director of our school heard about my name. So when he asked me what my name was, I said, my name is Luden Salamat. He said, Luden? Do you know what Luden actually means? So I said, no. <laughs> so he said, Luden means to play. Yeah, Luden means to play. So. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, the slides. So Luden means to play. Okay, so I said, I told myself, uh, if it actually means uh, something that your name is related to what your name actually means, well, I think it suits me, you know, because I like playing. I like, I am, a, I, I am, I am generally a happy person. That's why I wanted to be, that's why I became a teacher. I chose to be a teacher because I wanted to be, to have fun. I wanted to be with children, okay? So that's what I, that's what I like doing, okay? So uh, I graduated, a little introduction. I graduated from the University of Santo Tomas. I finished TV journalism. And then I took up my MA units at the Univer Philippine Normal University. After that, I, I attended a course in the US. I went to Harvard for a month uh, to study the arts and crafts of principalship. I became the principal of Paref Southridge School grade school for many, many years now before I became the faculty training officer of the school at present. So I am now the faculty development officer of Southridge School. I take care of both professional and character formation of the teachers. Welcome, Josephine. I can see you. Hi, Josephine. <laughs> Good that uh, you, you kept your camera on. Thank you very much. So 
uh, right now, right now, uh, I am going to talk to you about how to manage the class and how to form the students so that we can strengthen the relationship inside the, the classroom, okay? But before, before we begin, let us first uh, find out on a scale of emojis. You see the emojis there? How are you actually feeling right now? You can type one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, okay? One, if you're happy, two, if you're a bit uh, like doubtful, okay? Three, if you're, I don't know what that actually means, four, if you're in love, five, if you're sad, six, if you're, uh, okay, seven, if you're, I don't know, doubtful or something, and then eight, if you're like surprised, please type it in the chat box. How do you feel right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight? Put it in the chat box. Let me see. Oh, many are six, four, three, one. Okay. There's, okay, six, six, three. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, six. Good thing there's no five yet. Huh? There's no five yet. Oh, one, six, one, three, one, three. Okay. No one is in love? No number four? Okay, okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are a very engaged audience. <laughs> You're a very engaged participant. Thank you so much. No? Now, that is a big challenge, right? I mean, you have been teaching for two years online and the, one of the biggest challenges that we actually face is how do we get through our students? Now, how do we manage the classroom? How do we make them really understand how we feel? And how do we understand how they feel? Now, this is one way of actually doing it. You can start your class with a weather check or a temperature check. So you ask your students like uh, uh, on a scale of emojis, how do you feel right now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you can actually form a little bit of a conclusion. Like if everybody feels number six, not like happy. So I'm happy also. <laughs> I'm happy that everybody feels happy. I, I saw more ones and six uh, uh, and three. I did not see any five. I did not see any four. So at least the mood and the temperature of the uh, of this class that we have right now is kind of is okay. Okay. So this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful session. Okay. Very good. I hope you could give me a thumbs up, a virtual thumbs up. Can you give me a virtual thumbs up? Okay. Very good. Thank you, Ned. You're the only one I can see. Geraldine, salamat. Thank Cecilia. Hey, Josephine, thank you. Double thumbs up. Okay, thank you so much. Let us start uh, the, the session with uh, by reading this. Okay, so I'm going to read it aloud and you can read, you can read with me. Okay, so it says, I have come to a frightening conclusion. I am the decisive element in the classroom. Now, who is that? The teacher, of course, not the teacher is the high edge, I can see you. The teacher is a decisive element inside the classroom. Now, why? Why is the teacher the decisive element inside the classroom? One is because it is my, or it is his personal approach that creates the climate. Do you agree? So inside the classroom, you can actually change the weather, okay? So it is your daily mood that actually makes the weather, correct? So when you enter the classroom and you want the, cl the students to suffer, you can do that, right, Nedge? Right, Josephine? You can do that. When you enter the classroom, you can actually make the classroom atmosphere fun by getting inside the classroom with a smile. So actually, it, it, it's the mood of the teacher that dictates the kind of weather and the climate inside the classroom, okay? So if everybody is happy and then the teacher enters, and the teacher says, keep quiet, keep quiet. Everybody now will start to be quiet. And then you affect the, the, the weather inside the classroom. So the students now will say, uh-oh, it's gonna be a stormy day. Okay, it's gonna be a stormy day. But if the teacher enters the classroom with a big smile and a, and a nice greeting of good morning, everybody, how are you doing? How are you doing? Then the students will say, uh-oh, it's going to be a sunny day today. <laughs> the teacher is going to have, we are going to have such a wonderful day 
because the teacher's mood is great. Now, I don't know if you notice it, before you entered, I was already in the Zoom link, okay? And uh, I was trying my best to get connected with some of you. I would even call you by your name. I could only see five people on my screen right now, uh, unfortunately. So, and uh, I wanted you to unmute. I wanted to ask you questions because I wanted to really make sure that I could get through each one of you. Now, that is one very important factor that you have to consider. Again, you are the decisive element inside the classroom. Your personal approach creates the weather, okay? Let's continue. As a teacher also, I possess a tremendous power. What kind of power is that? To make a child's life miserable or joyous. Right? Right, Nedge? <laughs> to, make, to, make the, the, to make the child's life miserable. Or, you can actually do that. In, in, when we were growing up, at least when, when I was growing up in a, in a public elementary school until grade four, I knew that there were teachers na mayroon tinasabi in Tagalog, pinag-iinitan ang ibang estudyante. Correct? Okay? Now, that teacher can actually make the child's life miserable. On the other hand, there are teachers who are so happy when they see us, students, right? And so it, it actually, it, you become very joyful, no? And say, I like to be in that classroom. Why? Because the teacher is so encouraging, okay? Let's continue. Now look at that picture, okay? So you can also be a tool of torture, or an instrument of inspiration. And this is what we'd like to happen, that while we manage the classroom, we are an instrument of inspiration and not a tool of torture, okay? I can humiliate or humor, that's true. I can hurt or heal feelings of other people. Now, in all situations, it is my response that decides whether a crisis can, will be escalated or de-escalated. Again, as a teacher, we have a lot of choices. We are faced with a lot of choices every single day, every single hour, every single minute. Will I sanction this child? Will I punish this child? Will I give this test? Will I do this? Will, okay, so, or, if, this, if, if the situation, for example, inside the classroom, the students are fighting, the students are, are not listening, what is your response? Now, it is your response that decides whether the crisis will escalate or de-escalate, okay? Let us continue. And the child humanized or dehumanized. When do you dehumanize the child? When is the child humanized? A child is humanized when he is treated as a human being. Now, whether he is in college, every child, every person, every student that you have in the unit, inside your classroom, he has body and has soul. And every person there is a human being and therefore has dignity and therefore has to be treated with a lot of respect and kindness. Now, when do you dehumanize the child? You dehumanize the child if you treat the child as an animal. Okay, <laughs> and how do you train animals? By force, you get a whip, right? You get a whip or you get a carrot, right? If the, if the animal does not obey you, you whack the pet, right? You whack the animal and say, listen. And then the animal out of fear will follow, not because he wants to follow. Have you seen a lion tamer, okay? In a circus, for example, the lion, is not following because it understands the command. No, the lion is scared of the whip. Now we do not want to have animals inside our classroom. So we should stop treating them like animals. We should treat them like human beings. So what do you, what do you, human beings are, were created by God to reason out, right? And we have brains that think. We are rational beings. Therefore, the approach cannot be whipping. 
the approach should always be communicating, talking, explaining, listening. Okay, so marami pa yan as we go through the session today. Let us continue. So, who actually makes the difference inside the classroom? Who actually makes a difference inside the classroom? Can you uh, type it in the chat box? Chat box, please. Who makes the difference inside the classroom? The teacher, the teacher. Yes, very good, Josephine. Very good, Jean. Very good, very good. It is actually, it's actually, as she said, the teacher. The teacher is the difference maker inside the classroom. The teacher is the one who makes the difference inside the classroom, not the students. Not the students. Why? Because the teacher is the adult. Okay? You're the decisive element inside the classroom, and you're the old, you're also one of those that makes a difference inside the classroom. Okay, so please put that in your mind. If, if that's the only thing that you can remember after this talk, then I'm very happy. You make the difference inside the classroom. Therefore, that difference could be positive or negative, right? And what we want to happen here is that we will be able to be a positive change no, inside the classroom. Okay, now let's go to some basic understanding. I don't know if you've heard of Harry Wong. Have you all heard of Harry Wong? Have you heard of Harry Wong? Harry Wong is actually a, uh, Harry Wong is actually uh, one of the character uh, formation guru, okay? And he's actually an expert when it comes to classroom management. We were able to invite him here to the Philippines some years ago, courtesy of Catalyst under Mr. Mandarin Toy. And uh, he, he talked to us about the four stages of teaching. Right? Now, I don't know if you've already heard what the four stages of teaching are. Have you heard of this? Have you heard the four stages of teacher of teaching? Okay. I'm going to, to walk you through the four stages. According to Harry Wong, every teacher goes through what we call four stages, four stages of teaching. Okay, now look at the first, look at the next slide. Now I'm not going to reveal what the, that slide is about, but if you look at it, what do you think is the first stage? Can you type it in the chat box, please? What do you think is the first? Oh, yes, very good, Catherine. Catherine, very good. So I think you've read the book of Harry Wong. The first, the first stage is what we call fantasy. Okay. How many have already heard of this? Fantasy. You know what fantasy is, right? Fantasy means uh, it happens, but it will disappear immediately. Okay. So now why fantasy? Why fantasy? Now, I'll let you know why. Uh, how many are first-time teachers here? Could you please uh, say yes on the chat box if you're a first-time teacher? A first-time teacher. Yes, Randall? Randall, can you unmute yourself, please? Hi, Randall. Randall? You yes, are... Uh, yes, hi, Randall. Hello, Paul. Hello. Is this a boy's name or a girl's name? Sorry, ah. Boy's name, po. A boy's name. Okay, hi, Randall. So you're Hello. a first-time teacher. Yes, po. Oh, wow, very good. Now, I know something about you, Randall. Okay, and I know something about all the other teachers who are present here, including the ones who are not here even. On their first year, everyone, according to Harry, on our first year, even myself, and on your first year, Randall, I don't know. I don't know. No, because it's it's uh it's online. You know? So on our first year, we all went through the stage called fantasy. And fantasy is when you you were excited on the first day of school, right, Josephine? Josephine, how many years have you been in? Have you been teaching? Please do not ask. I'm already uh... <laughs> <laughs> many many years. <laughs> many many years. Congratulations! Because I've been teaching for thirty five years. Near that. <laughs> Near that. Okay, very good. So you're not alone. I'm not alone too. Thanks, Josephine. So Randall, I know something about you, and we know something about about all of us. On our first day of school, the very first year that we started teaching, we were so excited, right? <clears throat> we were so excited. We put on our best, uh, maybe our uniform, 
uh, if, if, if you were a girl, you say, you put on your makeup and brush your long, long hair. And then you, you actually went to the school with a lot of happiness no? and, and nice, uh, nice, uh, nice uh, uh, in a very nice disposition. And then when you entered the classroom, the students were very quiet, right? Because that was the first day of school. They were all quiet. And then when you enter, they say, good morning, teacher Randolph. I mean, Randolph's last name is Garcia. Good morning, Mr. Garcia. Then Randall says, good morning, everybody. Okay, and everybody was, everybody was listening to Randall. Everybody was listening to us on our first day. And then when the bell rang, hey, it's time. You have to go to another class. The students were, no, sir, please stay. We love you, sir. We love you. We love you. Fantasy. That's fantasy. Why? Because the next day, the same thing happened. You put on your makeup, not you, Randall, and you brush your long hair. You went to school, very enthusiastic, with a lot of energy. But when you entered the classroom, you did not see students who were quiet. You saw like a pandemonium. Students were on top of the table. Some of them were talking and then everything. And they say, good morning, everybody. And so they say, good morning, Mr. Garcia. What happened? <clears throat> what happened? So then you start asking, hey, don't you remember me yesterday? I was, you welcomed me. I, I was very happy you were there. I say, no, because you were in that fantasy stage. And then you had to resort to something. What was that? You resort to survival. <laughs> you had to survive. And how did you how do you survive? On my first year, when I couldn't control the class, you know what I did? I shouted. Keep quiet. Keep quiet, everybody. Don't you respect your teacher? So I went from fantasy to survival, okay? Now, sadly, sadly, dear teachers, there are many teachers who are up to now still surviving, but they have been in the teaching profession for a long period of time. Now, how come they are still surviving? Because they have not learned the skills of management, the skills of classroom management. You know how they survive? I'll tell you, the first way of surviving is what we call worksheets. You see worksheets? I'm sure everybody is familiar with worksheets. Okay, so the teacher goes to the classroom and says, okay, everybody, I want some peace and quiet over here. I am going to give you some worksheets. Answer the worksheets, answer the worksheets, answer the worksheets. And while you're answering the worksheets, I will give you another worksheet. Okay, so worksheet, worksheet, worksheet until 40 minutes are finished. And then you say, hi, salamat po. 40 minutes over, I survived. Right? So you call that worksheet. The other way of surviving is what we call textbooks. And I'm sure everybody had been, everybody is guilty of this. Monday, everybody, the teacher enters. Everybody, I want some peace and quiet over here. Please open your textbook to chapter three. And I want you to <coughs> type it in the chat box. I want you to what? <laughs> I want you to. Hi, Nedge. Thank you for saying so. Very good, Cone. Very good. Is that Cone or Connie? I want you to read the chapter. And then after, after, after reading the chapter, the student says, sir, we're done reading the chapter. You're done? It's not even 40 minutes. Read it again. Read it again. <laughs> okay? And then Tuesday. Tuesday. What happens on Tuesday? Well, Tuesday. I want you to get the textbook. I want some peace and quiet over here. I want you to read the chapter. And after reading the chapter, I want you to answer the questions, the guide questions after the chapter, Tuesday, Wednesday. What do you think will happen on Wednesday? 
What do you think will happen on Wednesday? Come on, type it in the chat box. You've already read. You've already answered. Oh, Connie. Connie said, test. Magte-test na siya. Magki-quiz na si Nadia. Yes, yes, Nadia. Actually, hindi mo na quiz. Not just not not quiz yet. On a Wednesday, the teacher would say, "Okay, we're going to have a graded recitation. A graded recitation about the chapter." Ah, okay. So, what are the questions? I don't know yet. I will just look at the textbook still. I will just look for some questions here that I can ask. And then Thursday is when the teacher gives the test. <laughs> We're all guilty of that. But what happens on Friday? What happens on Friday? Come on. You've already given the test. Check the answer. Okay, check the answer. Actually, what happens on Friday is, uh, is not that. On Friday, the teacher enters the classroom and the students say, sir, are we going to do anything today? And then the, the teacher says, of course, we're going to do something today. What are we going to do? We are going to watch a video. Wow! For a change, not textbook. There's video. Video. Sir, what is the title of the video? The title of the video is The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. Huh? The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire? I mean, what's the relationship between Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire and what we're discussing now in math? Okay, this is the, the response of the teacher. Well, you see, <clears throat> the rise and fall of the Roman Empire is related to the topic that we're discussing in math. Don't you see that? Roman numerals, Roman numerals, Roman Empire. They, they kind of match. <laughs> you see, now that's the way to survive. You just give them activities after activities, and then the whole day pass. Now, what do you mean the whole day? What about the whole the whole week? What do you mean the whole week? What about the whole month? What about the whole quarter, the whole term? What about the whole school year? If the teacher is just surviving, then you would you would probably realize uh, what will happen to the students no? if the teachers are they are just surviving. Okay. Now look at this slide. It says there, uh, read, do now, read pages 12 to 380 and answer questions one to 600. <laughs> okay, so, so look at what, what the students are actually saying. Uh-uh, teacher burnout, teacher burnout. So what happens now to teachers who always survive, survive and survive only? This is what happens to them. They become frustrated, they become disappointed. They are always angry. They are very tired. They are very tired. And they ask this question. When is retirement? <laughs> when is retirement? What do you mean retirement? You're just 26 years old. You cannot retire at 26. Okay? Normally, it's at 60 or 65. Okay? But teachers who do not discover, uh, who have not discovered how to manage their classes will end up actually asking each day, when am I going to retire? And that is sad because that's, that's the same person that the students see each day, a tired teacher, okay? So the next, uh, the, the next uh, stage of, uh, good, of teaching is what we call mastery. Now, this is what uh, Harry Wong was saying. Mastery means you're almost an expert. You have your, your, your lessons are ready. You have very good classroom management skills. Your, your, your students are learning. Okay. And then the last one is this, impact. <clears throat> impact. What do you mean by impact? That means that, well, you do not need any, parabang, parang, you do not worry about evaluation anymore because you know that you are doing well. You're not afraid of being observed by by the by your supervisor why because you know that you're okay you know that you're good you know that you're making an impact okay now 